Um, okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, let me see. Uh, I guess the first, let me actually post the links to the minutes um, so everyone has them. Um, okay, so I guess the first thing on the agenda is the model zoo overhaul. And I think this, you're, what you were just saying is a se great segue to this, Peter. Um, so I kind of took the issue that, um, that Brian had created um, and turned it into something that's, I guess, a little bit more like a milestones or a plan. I think for the most part, the packages that we've created over the summer are kind of at the stage where we need to start putting them into the model zoo and the larger ecosystem documentation so that, um, you know, people start using them and we can verify their stability and things like that. Um, so I, I just tried to come up with a plan overall for how to do that. That's in the issue that I just linked in the chat. Um, and I also added this issue to triage. I don't know necessarily if that makes sense, but, um, yeah, I think, I think at this point, this might be one of our top priorities. Um, if that, uh, do people generally agree with that? I do. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. Yeah. So I, I, I guess the main idea is basically to go through, figure out and document what's currently broken in the model zoo, if anything is. Um, then kind of make sure we close out some last outstanding PRs um, in the ecosystem. So like I listed a couple here. Um, one of the things we have is a PR to add standard models to metalhead to just kind of clean up metalhead and um, make sure we have pre-trained models in there. And um, fortunately we have someone who's working, who's picked that up right now. And I think that PR will probably be ready to merge soon. Um, so yeah, once we merge those kinds of things, we can make use of them in the tutorials. So, you know, if we have a ResNet tutorial in the model zoo that loads up a pre-trained ResNet, um, you know, maybe does some kind of transfer learning step or something with, um, with the packages that we've created and, you know, goes through the training process with Flux Training, that would be a, an example tutorial. And, you know, rather than, I guess, writing code that um, will become outdated pretty soon once we close these PRs, I think the first step is to close the PR so that the code is no longer, that we're writing up-to-date code for the future. Um, so should um, the tutorials for using the models and for example, doing transfer learning, should they live in fastair.jl or should they live as the documentation of the models or in more generally, I guess, um, do we have a, a defined interface for how people can call and instantiate models you know, separate from the tutorials that they used in? Because for example, there are I, I think I, you also have a Flex Models uh, repository with some implementations. Uh, I have one as well. 
Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I guess they need to be merged, but um, the the style in which um, in which they build is, is a little bit different. So um, I I was thinking maybe we need to uh, settle on on one way, maybe compare some uh, possibilities. Yeah, I think it's worthwhile to have a like a separate call or discussion about that because um, I mean the well one I added you as a uh, I guess collaborator on my fork of metalhead so um, you know I think there's a couple models in your flux mod what I tried to do is we I had a flux models repo and we decided that instead of um, using that repo, I would just um, take the vision models from there and update Metalhead instead of creating a, a separate different repo and trying to deprecate Metalhead. And so um, that's what I did with that PR. And then I added you as a collaborator so that um, you can directly add the models that you had in uh, in your repo to that PR. Um, but in terms of style, um, yeah, I mean, we can discuss it. Uh, the approach I had taken was to not create, um, and so far been successful in that approach is to not create uh, new types, so new, um, kind of higher level layers. So for example, in PyTorch, uh, a basic block or a bottleneck is its own type. Um, the way I tried to structure it was to have a function called basic block or bottleneck that would return to you a model that, that does what a basic block is, but um, the types, there's no overlap over all type for that. It's just a chain and it, and there's no special types within it. And so the reason I went with that kind of style was because these pre-trained models might be used in downstream packages um, that do operations on the models themselves. And in those cases, um, having to specialize on every single uh, higher level layer type that's not part of the standard flux, but is just a special type created for this model specifically. Um, well, I guess just becomes really annoying. It's just a lot of uh, random dispatch like code that you have to add um, that at least in my experience with PyTorch doing those kinds of operations has been really annoying. Um, so that's yeah. why I didn't. Um, I I agree that I definitely agree that it's uh, useful to have um, a function approach or at least return just regular um, flux layers, but for somewhat different reasons. So I wouldn't say that it's absolutely necessary if you introduce new types to um, add a dispatch for everything that uses it. The, you can get away in most cases with doing something a bit more dynamic. Um, I, I have a little bit older repository, uh, modelutils.jl, that um, basically just looks at um, the fields in a struct that represents a model and kind of guesses which one are uh, flux parameters and which one are just configuration. So that would be one way to also do that, I think, without uh, with avoiding that. But um, from, oh. sorry. Um, uh, can I just interject here? Sorry? Uh, may I just interject here? Um, sure. I, I, sorry about that. Yeah. Um, now I can see Kyle's perspective on not wanting specialized types. Um, because everything ultimately is just, you know, convolution or whatever uh, or there, uh, which Flux already has. Um, and, but I don't really think 
um, that's too much of a bottleneck in general because you don't really want to dispatch on a basic block that often. And if it is useful in um, cases where dispatch is necessary, it might even make sense for us to have, um, you know, just, just a wrapper type, which at least says that something is a basic block and not just a chain. Otherwise, um, you'll end up having to identify these blocks yourself or however it would turn out, right? Um, since there is no real performance set, I, I don't really know if that's, you know, expressly a bad idea, especially if you want to dispatch on those things. But I do agree that a functional approach is generally my preferred way out of these things as well. Right. Um, so I don't dispatching is definitely um, more handy. If, I mean, if you can dispatch on the type right away. How will this interface with Onyx? So would you so, be able to read in a metalhead model and then write it out as yeah. an Onyx file? Yeah, so there's, there's two things here. First is that, as Lawrence pointed out, that you know, guessing which things are parameters and which aren't seems kind of uh, you know, prone to breaking a lot. So I wouldn't probably go that route <clears throat> either. And in cases where we do want to uh, write out Onyx files, it is completely plausible for us to just have uh, you know, the same functor rules as we do for any other layer to uh, push out the same parameter graphs and such that we do um, you know, as a normal flux model. So uh, using the same rules, we can write the same Onyx graph. It should not really make any difference whatsoever. Um, because ultimately, if you're, if you're uh, looking into the forward process anyway, it doesn't really matter where those forward passes live. It's, if it's in a different type or you know flux type, it doesn't really matter. Um, so we we shouldn't be constrained on that front. I feel, but if uh, and this was this was a design goal with the uh, metalhead as well, that we didn't want uh, you know very specific types, especially if they weren't adding too much to uh, you know whatever the problem it is that we were trying to solve, which is writing these vision models, but um, we did identify that, you know, if things like basic block can be reused in multiple places and maybe, you know, we want to make them configurable or whatever, then it does indeed make sense for us to have like a wrapper type, which we can use to dispatch rules on more efficiently. Um, that was just, you know, going with the uh, Julian, you know, dispatching rules, which were just nicely composing. So um, if even if it is just something that, you know, wraps around a chain or whatever. Um, it, to me, it makes sense if, uh, you know, we, we want that flexibility of dispatch. Why you would want that hasn't really come up that uh, frequently in, uh, you know, practical use, considering that anytime we need one of those layers, we can just call the function itself. But then, then it's slightly less self-documenting in a way. Um, yeah. So yeah. I'd say that the, documentation part on a well, on a type basis and uh, well one one thing i wanted to add was first that um if you serialize a model to something like jld2 or bsim then um having custom types in there means you have a dependency on the package that constructed the model so that is like a small downside if you don't want to load them uh then you have some have to have to install something out other than flux um and the other thing i wanted to mention was that since the models are usually like have a hierarchy of um higher level like large blocks or levels and then mid, mid level blocks and then um kind of layer conveniences right and um, there's a lot of different configuration parameters that you kind of need to pass all the way through to the bottom so if i'm constructing like a resnet for example what how can i specify that i want to change the um, the activation function in all the convolutions to something different than relu which is probably the default so how how to pass all that through um in that case, wouldn't you be loading the package out? anyway? Sorry? 
In that case, wouldn't you be loading that package anyway to get the model constructor with the different activations? What do you mean? Um, well, I mean, I think the point is, and, and this is what I was getting at where, okay, let's say I want to replace every conv with, um, with another con where the activation is different, but everything else is the same. Um, I can dispatch, I can easily write a function that does that and dispatches on the conv type. Um, and then the, the thing, the issue is basically, okay, now I pass in some model that's not just cons, but you know, a model made up of chains and all that kind of stuff. Now, okay, I can dispatch on a chain as just mapping to each layer in the chain, right? And then I can, uh, each thing in the chain is either gonna be another chain or now it's gonna be dense or con or something like that. So then for all the other primitive things, I can just write like a no-op uh, dispatch and then for the cons, it'll hit the conv dispatch. But suppose now the things in the chain include things like basic block or bottleneck now I have to write another dispatch rule that de-sugars the basic block wrapper type. Um, and now in Metalhead, let's say all the wrapper types are literally wrappers around a single field that's just the functional version, right? Then, then you have an assumption that, okay, everything else can be unwrapped or de-sugared in the same way um, I mean, uh, I guess that's one option, um, but I guess something about that feels unclean to me because you're making assumptions about the field of a certain type, which generally what, I think is not a good idea unless you're like, uh, that is unclean. what about an abstract layer type, uh, um, type with, no. uh, with the, yeah, I mean, that's, that's also like an option, right? Is to have layers inherit from some kind of abstraction, but we've avoided that so far in Flux. And I mean, I don't- Why not just use flux.fmap for this out of curiosity? Um, that would de-sugar it uh, you know, uniformly across any type. I was looking at it, it does it. It does it iterate over structure necessarily though? My understanding is that oh it traverses all the way down to the parameter level. So it doesn't give you the actual structures back. But that I was thinking about using fmap as well. Whereas I think what they're asking for here is for example, you want to go through a model and substitute every pooling layer with a different pooling layer. And fmap, like I think it makes sense to have an fmap type or like a functor type traversal for that. But um, functor as it is now doesn't seem to handle that. So we can definitely expose that, right? Because um, this is just a functor functionality that we're talking about here, essentially. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so in the same way as uh, you would want to, there was this PR recently, I keep getting back to this, where we uh, talk about the zeros type, right? So like it's, possible that you would want to say, okay, just freeze all the biases for me right now. Um, so that seems like a completely parallel uh, problem. You know, I want to replace all of my these conv layers with these other more different conv layers. Um, they all sound like the same problem to me and we can definitely just expose that in functors. Um, another thing I want to chime in about is that could we not as a middle ground, or at least as a stopgap, allow chain to take a named tuple. Um, this is something you get in PyTorch. It allows for more documentation because you still iterate your parameters in the same order. It, it's transparent to, like apply chain still works in theory, but at least you know, like instead of having to have a basic block wrapper type to say, yes, this is a basic block, you can just say, oh, this, layer group name is basic block and the thing that once there's a chain or whatever, what have you. Um, I think just from the types, uh, it probably wouldn't work on the same chain unless you make chain term check on a union of tuple name tuple because name tuple is not a subtype of tuple. So maybe like a name chain. I was going to mention, um, also could you clarify 
what exact benefit that gets us uh, from an implementation point of view, or is it just yeah. the sugar that we're after? Like we get basic block equals on chain. Well, it's it's not so much obviating the need for well. If one reason we were talking about having a basic block type is that you can see, look at part of a model's parameters and see that's a basic block. It's a documentation aspect, right? Otherwise you look and it's a chain of chains and you don't know what the nested chains are. Um, but in some sense, if you add a name to these parameters, then you know what they are. Because one, one of my personal regrets of chain as well is that it loses all context on what the child layers are, right? You, um, you have to look at either the type, you have to look at the structure, Whereas if you have a set of names, it's also easier to, for example, selectively um, pull parts out of the structure. It's easier to for uh, iterate and print out a summary and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I and it doesn't require a complete, uh, like it, it works with new types. It works with name types regardless. Like it's an orthogonal thing. Yeah, I, I think the addition or using types, at least for PyTorch, using like mid-level layers um, is basically, yeah, for two things is one is that naming aspect, which I think this name tuple suggestion would get us. Um, now, the other thing is maybe you want to dispatch on a certain type of structure. Um, and for that, I would point to the whole PR with um, the parallel split join. So, um, you know, in the Metalhead PR, I took the, the functional approach of having everything just return what's already in flux. Um, but I, I do think there is value in, instead of returning um, this closure, over a bunch of branches that are each chains and then that get catted together instead of returning that closure to return an actual well-documented structure from Flux. So I, I do think that um, there are layers that get reused quite often um, that should be defined, but I think they should be defined. And, and the one I'm particular and thinking of in particular is parallel. I think they should be defined in Flux itself so that it's uh, standardized. And, um, you know, then for the whole discussion we're having on dispatch, the utility is not dispatching specifically on basic block or bottleneck or something like that, or inception block is, is the one I'm thinking of, I guess. Utility is oh, for inception block matches this kind of parallel structure, and this is how you. Um, operate on a, this kind of parallel structure. So being able to dispatch on parallel is more important than being able to dispatch on inception block, which is one particular implementation of parallel. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. one, sorry, one other thing I was gonna say is um, uh, I like the name tuple suggestion that's been thrown out. Um, if there's something in functors that could make uh, custom types just work, um, then I think that's also a valid solution. Um, but even the most hacky solution is to have a functional version of basic block or bottleneck. And then on the highest level function, like the ResNet 50 function that gives you the ResNet, have a keyword argument that uh, indicates whether you want a uh, functional model returned or you want this you know, wrapped model return. And then the wrapper types can just um, be syntactic sugar for uh, the, the functional a wrapper around the, the functional uh, version of basic block. Um, so that's also an option, gives, you, gives the user the option of picking which one they want. Yeah. So this is kind of parallel to how we um, have handled forward passes, right? So like in convolutions, for example, we have the functional convolution as well as the layer, which holds its parameters and whatever. So uh, something similar to that maybe makes sense. 
um, you know, a constructor and a like a functional constructor which will just return the chain, the usual chain, and you can configure all the you know activation functions and such in it. Or parallelly, you could uh, have uh, you know, quote unquote, the current status quo where we return the type. Um, it may have direct parameters. It can have just a layer. You can debate on how that works. Um, that I think makes sense. On on the topic of having a documented layer about doing basic operations. Um, so cat reshaping, we, we did actually initially also discuss having um, a reshape layer defined in Flux itself. So, you know, we could, um, I, I forget the exact issue that uh, was causing that, but at some point in time, I believe we uh, had a case where when Zygote was very, uh, you know, new, um, the reshape adjoint would be a bit inefficient. Um, so that was so that we could make sure that you know, if we have our own layer, we can define our own adjoint, yada, yada. Don't worry about any of that. Um, one personal gripe that I have with that fear is that it's it complicates matters somewhat in the sense that um, what it is trying to do is essentially something that base already provides via reshape or a cat or whatever, or reduce. If you can parallel that better, that to me makes a bit more sense all of a sudden because um, I can understand not wanting the closures in there. It's not intuitive what's happening. Um, but I also don't want to add too much machinery on top of it if it means that uh, you know we, we open ourselves to more errors than we really need, essentially. It somewhat muddies the water, right? So like a newcomer to Flux will assume that you know the X, Y, Z operations are available, whereas that's not really the case. And we want to you know, encourage people to be able to do whatever modeling they can anyway. So maybe I would I would actually you know like some kind of um, you know back and forth so if if we can find the time to you know understand which kind of approach makes more sense, um, having like a split apply layer or, or a parallels layer versus, you know, something that can just create branches and call it a day. And, you know, we just have a reduce operation at the end, which can do whatever operations you want with the branches. So like a branches versus having these specific parallels and combines and stuff. So I'm not sure I'm on the branches front. Um, what does that I guess I don't know what that looks like because um, when you say branches, I'm imagining defining each branch as a function um, and then having a closure that calls all the branches and then does a reduce operation on the result of all of them and returns that. Um, so what, what, what do you mean by branches? So by my branches, I guess what I mean is that, uh, so it's kind of like the parallel layer, right? Um, when I when I want to do certain operations with different configurations with the same pattern, right? And if I want to do that in multiple goals and then I want to say, reduce it all into a single output. Um, so the branches would basically uh, take in, uh, you know, it could either take in you know, explicit branches, so like uh, just just a splatting of uh, chains. So like you can just give it a bunch of chains, n chains, and then give it a reduce operation to reduce the output under. Um, or more, which which I guess uh, is very similar to the parallels implementation that we have, right? Or um, it could do something a bit more tricky where you know you can give it the structure that you want it to run and you give it a, like a, a vector of configurations that you want to run it under and then it can decide itself you know what all optimizations we can actually use to um, elide some of the computation so that way uh, you can you can run things on separate tasks 
reduce as much work as you can because there's a bunch of uh, optimizations you can do in the middle to not have to do one, uh, multiple convolutions. You can share the weights essentially. And then you can do the same reduce operation at the end. If, if I okay. wanted to, uh, as an example, this is just a, uh, an example. If I wanted to write, say, a visualization tool where I could take a trained model and display it in some interesting way on the screen, would either of these uh, approaches be better for some external developer who wants to, you know, either serialize the model or display it or maybe transform it in some way where you can, you can, you know how to interpret what's coming out. To me from right now, it feels like it should be the same either way um, because we do have the explicit model information right at any given point in time. So if I wanted to make a graph out of it, I could. Um, does that sort of answer your question? Yeah, I suppose you'd need to be able to figure out what's connected to what and right, how, yeah. how to interrogate each thing to find out what's in it. The only real tricky bit that I see happening is that, uh, so in this particular manner of doing things, you would end up with always like an anonymous function. You could always try to, you know, do silly tricks around not having an anonymous function, but if it is an anonymous function, you will end up with something like a hash 42 or whatever, uh, which, kinds of uh, slurps in the output from multiple things together and then produces magically you know, an output. Whereas the only interesting thing inside it is some concatenation maybe. So if we yeah. can uh, send that information back to the user somehow through an AST transform maybe, that might be useful. But other than that, um, we know always what is connected to what, right? So like, other than that being a bit confusing, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what. And we can figure um, out what's yeah. connected to what and in what way things are combined. Is it a matrix Correct. multiply? Is it a summation, whatever? I feel like if you were going this far, you might as well <laughs> trace to something like Onyx and then look at that representation because at some point, you're going to hit a function that's not supported. Even if you said how to reshape layer of flux, it's um, not possible to reimplement all the base operations people are going to use. And at some point, somebody is going to use an anonymous function. And regard, like, uh, there's a similar, when you serialize Onyx, obviously you have to trace all the way down, find that one, and then put it in the graph and say, oh, there's a cat or something going on here. And with this approach, I think it has to be something similar. Because um, unless we say don't use anonymous functions at all because they don't serialize, that's a, that's a different problem. But um, if you don't want to put that restriction in place, then there needs to be some mechanism that goes in and pulls those out anyways. Yeah. Um, so, I... so to interrupt, um, I just wanted to ask, um, do we already have an issue discussing uh, some of those things? Because it probably has come up already, right? And maybe can we um, collect uh, in text, like writing down different approaches for how it could be handled, what the interface could look like. Uh, I feel it would be a bit easier to uh, compare then. There was a lot of back and forth on the Onyx issue um, in the tracker. Let me see if I can find it. Pretty much about like how to represent a serialized form of a network for export, how to, um, like what data structures to use, or a whole discussion about the parallel chain there, and whatnot. Um, it's not a direct translation to what Peter was talking about, but it's pretty darn close. Oh, I mean, like another another uh, example might be that I want to research how to optimize. I've got a trained model, and I want to, you know, make it smaller. I want to I want to optimize it in some way, and this is an external tool. So so, 
I want to write some code that traverses the model and, and does something interesting to it. So uh, one approach to handle that is um, if there's like an, like an interface package for kind of defining for custom layers, you know, what fields uh, are you know, sub-models, what fields are parameters, um, then that can be used to um, traverse models and destructure them and rebuild them. I, I um, think for the most part, um, that's a bit tricky considering how Julia is structured. The best approach that we have, um, you know, in terms of world building is in how we define functors, right? Like we can point out parameters specifically. So if, if you so wish to uh, you know, give a list of parameters from the struct, you can do that at, with add functors. So that way you can separate out metadata from parameters, things that are necessary. And then obviously if that's not trainable, you can do that. This almost feels like a need for putting like resuscitating flex.children because there's a, or like building, at least building on top of factors, hopefully. And if not possible there, then <clears throat> you're implementing it directly because um, there's a need, it seems like there's a need for a shallow level traverse of, I just want all the members that are not parameters um, and also not non-parameters and like all the all the layer like things from this layer, um, which is I mean, it's not hard to do on something like chain or another basic data structure, but for a custom model, it probably requires some sort of functor like transform right. um, to do it, to to reflect on all the struct members and pull out the ones you want or just get people to implement it manually, which is probably not too bad. Like I can't think of too many models that have like dozens of some modules. Yeah, I could imagine that if you wanted to add your own strange thing into the model, then you should also implement A, B, and C. You, you, the, the documentation says for this to work with all the other tools, you need to implement these things. And that wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, and I mean, ideally, I should do it for you um, when you call functor or what have you. But, and then you can override it as need be because um, one thing is that I found particularly frustrating working with like fast AI is when you get around to slicing a model, for example, for transfer learning, um, you can't do it with just the custom module class. You have to output sequentials everywhere which goes back to the chain problem where you're losing all that metadata about, okay, what is this chain mean? What does this layer in this chain actually do? Like is like, okay, well, I know it's the second conv layer and the third ResNet block, but that doesn't mean anything to me. Maybe it has more significance than that, for example. Um, so I, I mean, the kind of utopia is being able to write custom modules and still having that slicing dicing functionality. Um, which I kind of went off in a bit of a tangent on, on the Onyx tracker issue, but the that would be ideal um, because then that also alleviates the need for a lot of the custom combinators. I mean, parallel and stuff are still useful, but uh, like it it stops us from going down the oh you need to reduce a reshape layer and a cat layer and a sum layer and a, so on and so forth. Do we need like a tables.jl? For models, I, I don't think it needs to be traits. I honestly, I like, like I think the functors approach is maybe close enough there. Oh, oh yeah, maybe like. Yeah, but you need methods like, to override, right? Yeah, yeah, like a like tables, but less ambitious. Maybe is the. Um, so and, and uh, also define traits. Uh, um, one method uh, here that that would be really useful for model model building as well. Um, is um, for layers that uh, like chain. Um, if you want to mutate uh, a field on a struct, uh, you, you can't do that, of course, on immutable struct, but you can create a new struct um, with a different uh, field, but that kind of requires having a constructor that just takes all the fields in order. 
uh, which uh, sequential doesn't do. So they would also have to um, define a constructor for that. Um, I think there's also a package that does that for like JSON serialization. But that would yeah, be yeah, that's really messy. To, to create things like um, um, PyTorch hooks, um, I've I've um, done that with flux models by kind of wrapping them in a hook layer. But then you need to update um, the field of the parent um, model, of course. Yeah, I think one thing that might check out of this is having like a lens sort of way to update models immutably as well. Uh, the, work, the current way it's done in PyTorch is pretty brittle, um, yeah. especially again, when you hit something that's not a sequential. So, and I mean, rough everything in the hook, they can get away with hooks because everything is an end dot module, but it seems like we're not, we don't really want to go down that route if we don't have to. Yeah, I definitely agree. We've we've tried this approach of, you know, well, we'll just assume the constructors exist or, or we even did that for um, adjoints for, for Zygote when we were deciding well, whether it should return a special differential type, a name tuple or type itself, or like the same type that you input itself. Um, it's a bit janky. Um, what made the most sense at the time was again to go through this uh, you know a, a functor-esque approach and uh, now in optimizers i think it's in it's in my pr uh, we have a way to you know construct um, the the differential chain essentially um, as like uh, uh, an intermediate representation and then do an update step directly using those. So that way it's it's significantly more uh, you know uh, easier to reason about whatever is happening because you no longer have to deal with all the name tuples and such. Um, so that's at least the learning from that. You, you probably don't want to be doing that. Um, on the second, for a shallower traversal approach, um, I just checked with uh, Sorry, I, uh, I just sorry, checked I, with, uh, oh, sorry. using macro tools, and we can definitely just post work on the struct. Um, <laughs> we can integrate that into functors uh, directly for us to have like a more shallow traversal route as well. Um, so yeah, you could probably have both. Um, so with the functors based approach, I guess there's like two pieces. Um, not, not to say what, what I'm about to say would uh, be evidence for not doing this, these or building off of functors, but um, there's two parts. There's one is the, the fields in the struct that are sub modules that are not parameters. And then there's the other part, which is how those fields connect together on the forward pass. And um, it's not clear to me how the functors approach gets you that second piece of information. Um, whereas if you were to have a, let's say an actual layer like parallel, um, you would know one, what the subfields are uh, that make up the submodules. And then two, how they actually come together to produce an output on the forward pass. And so, you know, when you dispatch on parallel, you know that because you're using parallel and that information is standardized by flux, it's, you know, be by a standard land flux, you can, um, you know, have those kinds of guarantees about how how the forward pass is going to be done to to integrate all the submodules together. Um, so that's not a reason not to do the functors thing, but I think it, I think what I'm basically saying is that while all this functor stuff will be useful for mid layer, mid level layers in general, I, I would still push that um, there's kind of one missing layer from flux, which is this parallel thing. And you, and I, going all the way back to like the branches stuff, I think that gets into um how to actually execute 
such a layer on the forward pass. So I think you could have a branches function that accepts like, let's say a bunch of chains, a variable number of chains or a variable number of models. They don't have to be chains and some kind of configuration and then executes that according to the configuration. But to me that could, well, so it, if you wanted to have that branches be, be a function, like a one node in the chain. So you have a conv and then it goes into this branch structure and then it does something else. To insert that branch structure into the chain, you would still need a closure, like an anonymous function. Um, Cause you need to close over all the chains that go into the branch. And so because you have to store that data, I think it makes more sense since it's such a common operation to store that data in a standardized layer um, so that people actually know how to refer to each of the branches within a parallel style operation. And the forward pass definition of parallel could still use this you know, branch configuration function if we wanna support some kind of advanced running you know, advanced execution of a parallel layer. Um, but I think, still think there's some value in it being its own type. If... One yeah, I think- that I would have, I, if I may. Now that makes sense to me. Um, I think what you're saying is about right in terms of, um, knowing what the forward pass is doing, you know, having those guarantees. But then one quick question that I might have is, what do you expect that forward pass to be, right? Um, because are we making assumptions that every parallel model, so to speak, every parallel function produces outputs which can be you know basically whatever we there could be arrays of completely incompatible sizes they could be you know different types they could be you know all of these xyz things so how do you define the forward pass would you not want that forward pass to be something that is chosen by the user and having a fallback uh, version or two, maybe we could say, okay, just add them or just concatenate them. Like I know this will just be a concat. Um, well, I'm thinking that the design of parallel should be similar to skip connection. So it should, I mean, it would basically have two fields that would have a, um, it would have a field that's, you know, a tuple or vector of all the branches and then a field that's the reduce operation, whatever that reduce operation is. And then the forward pass definition would be to uh, map each branch onto the input tensor and then um, reduce with that, it'd be a map reduce operation, right? You'd be mapping each branch onto the input tensor and then reducing the result of those branches with whatever the specified reduce op. So I think from a user's perspective, you know, similar to skip connection, if I give skip connection uh, a branch and a reduction operation that are totally incompatible in terms of size, um, I mean, it's gonna throw an error when it tries to do that reduce operation and I mean, that error shouldn't be surprising to me because I'm the one who specified, you know, kind of what to do. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that it's, that's at least how I would defi define the forward pass is a map reduce over the branches and the, yeah. yeah. I was thinking just the same and it makes sense to um, generalize skip connection because if you look at the non-operational layer combinators like chain, like scope connection, they're purely structural. And those are not things that are exposed in base because they are representing essentially control flow. So it doesn't seem like such a heinous crime to include those because there is only a limited amount of control flow that can be done. Um, so 
you know, it's it's not like you're you're not running behind trying to uh, wrap a ever growing number of operations because there's only really like split split parallel join um, and then you can with the map reduce you can probably collapse those down into just the parallel as well. Yeah, I don't think you need split or join. Um, and I, and I think I've been convinced by, uh, you know, everyone pushing back that adding split and join is probably, you know, redundant and sur sur superfluous. Yeah. Yeah. But just like, for example, how zeros is used for bias instead of just saying bias is false right now, um, kind of, it, it, there is a kind of conceptual clarity in not just special casing something like skip connection and having something that is more versatile um, because it like uh, Peter posts has posted a couple times about stacks or sorry not stacks of uh, flexes or is it tracks is serial yeah. layer tracks is there that's the one serial layer which is also another generalization of uh, another approach to do things but it like having general purpose combinators makes more sense to me personally because people are going to be um, like people do some pretty bespoke network architectures and trying to cover all of them specifically is part of the reason we got into the kind of Keras style layer explosion problem. So combating the entropy is always a nice thing to have. Yeah, and I, I think even if we do add parallel, it's not going to solve all the problems that we've. It'll give us some features that I think we we think are nice, but it won't solve all the problems. I, you know, it won't solve the naming issue of what a particular parallel operation in a chain actually does. It'll give me some kind of dispatch ability to do a generic transform to it, but because I have some guarantees about what a parallel will do. Um, but there are other things like the visualization and things like that, where you actually want to know what this specific parallel is supposed to mean, not just how it behaves. And in those cases, I mean, I, I, I think the functor style thing is, um, will be helpful for building a lot of the other stuff that we're talking about. Um, uh, with tracing through um, models and stuff, but but I, I do think there's some level of elegance to the name tuple suggestion that uh, Brian gave. I mean, it gives us one thing and one thing only, which is documenting the different parts of a chain um, and maybe even being able to index by the names of the name tuple, but then the behavior is completely unchanged in terms of. Um, uh, I'm sorry for cutting in again, but since the meeting is drawing too close, I just want to ask um, um, a lot of ideas have been thrown around. Where can we gather them and maybe write them down? Uh, I think it would be really useful to have some interface sketches of how it would be used. Um, what it would mean so that we can really compare the approaches and um, yeah, have some structure in the process, make give like a little bit better overview. Um, so what do you think would be the best way to go about that? Well, so the, there's like a lot of things, I guess, going on in this discussion um, and they all kind of tie together, but they're all orthogonal in some way. Um, so, I mean, I think the best thing might be to actually have a new page in that design document that discusses this particular issue. Um, like you said, documents, maybe some use cases of how the different implementations would actually play out. Um, and then maybe we can all, you know, we can start linked to that design document in particular issues if we wanna raise them. Like let's say in Flux, I wanna raise an issue about adding parallel I mean, it already exists, but I'll, I can comment on that issue and I can say, okay, according to this design document, I think this section is a reason to merge this PR or, and yeah, does that make sense? 
Hey, uh, just so we can keep things in one place, I would uh, much rather have either, you know, design discussion happening in the issue itself, or even better, if you want to open a separate issue, which just links to the uh, discussion and the design document, uh, design document uh, specifically. And that way, you know, at least we can make sure that everything is easily searchable. If that makes sense. Everything is indexed yeah. easily. Yeah, that that does make sense. I mean, when I type up, when I type up the minutes, I can, I, I can do that too this week. Since it's Thanksgiving week, uh, there's no meetings <laughs> for the most part. So I have time to do something like that. Um, I guess we, we didn't really get into most of the agenda, but that's totally okay because I thought this was pretty good discussion. Um, since the meetings, you know, over time should be just end here instead of trying to squeeze other things in. Right. I wanted to say something about data augmentation.jl, um, but Dale already left. It probably would, would have been most relevant for him. Um, okay. I'm rewriting it at the moment, adding support for three-dimensional data and everything, um, which is needed for the medical uh, use case he's working on. Okay. Um, I just want to say for the README page, people should make sure they like the, the, the little description I gave for each of the packages. And if you if you want something different, please put it in. Uh, oh, I think, can I add a data augmentation to JL as well? I already, uh, I already uh, added that. Uh, I, I already added data augmentation and I made up just a little sentence it. to go with it, but please feel free to change it. Yeah, I guess since, okay. yeah, since I it's like the, uh, the readme maybe. Like Sorry, I, I was just gonna say, since it's the readme, maybe we can get, um, you know, more than one person reviewing it just so that we all agree on what it actually says. Um, Absolutely. I, I didn't have any. I haven't gotten around to it yet. Okay, yeah, mm. cool. I didn't have any other changes other than I think that we should change all the repo names to links so people can click on the names in the list and go to the actual packages. Yes, and uh, probably link to the documentation where it is. Yeah. Yeah, because like flex training and deal pipelines, for example, they already um, have some actually usable examples. So it, it's still a pull request. So just add, you know, comments yep. and changes yep. to that. Definitely. Thanks, Sounds Peter. Good. Anything else? Um, should we? Um, I I would. Um, I'm in favor of creating a, a publish.jl setup for fastair.jl. Uh, I think we discussed um, fast uh, publish versus documenter on, on the Zulip. I mean, of course, the styling can always be adapted if it needs to look the same as, um, as the one on the Flexible website. Um, but I think it would be useful for hosting tutorials. If nobody has, well, let me put it this way. If nobody uh, has something against it, uh, I will uh, start a PR adding it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm in favor of it. Uh, cool. OK, anything yeah, else? Uh, not from my side. Um... Awesome. Well, I guess thanks everyone for joining. Uh, oh, one quick thing. I put like a simple parallels implementation in the chat. Is this close to what you were going for? Um, um yeah, I mean, yeah. 
that's yeah. what I was thinking of. I think I, in the PR on Flux, that that was adding the parallel join split. Um, I reviewed that PR and I uh, edited it so that the forward pass matched what I was going for. Um, yeah. I just wanted to make sure we're on the same page. Yep. Yeah, I think we're on the same page. Thank you. Okay. Well, I guess we'll head out. Thanks, everyone. Uh, and then we'll have, a, have a good journey. Thanks. For those in the US. Sorry. I, I, I just wish to do Thanksgiving. Or something. Oh, happy okay. Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Happy okay. Thanksgiving. I yeah. actually didn't know it was Thanksgiving. Happy belated <laughs> Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, all right. See you in two weeks. See you in two yeah. weeks. Bye. See you.